you know, witnessing that grief and being with that grief and celebrating the fact that I am not sick anymore like both of those things and what's amazing you know when I was first diagnosed there was very little options and now like even McDonald's in Portugal has gluten-free buns hi I'm Kim Tolson and I'm the traveling therapist it's my passion to teach therapists how to navigate online private practices and multiple income streams so they can travel the world I'm a digital nomad with a virtual insurance-based private therapy practice and a multi-six-figure coaching business. I'm obsessed with entrepreneurship and developing tools that can help therapists live an adventurous lifestyle. In this podcast, I will discuss my journey as a digital nomad, I'll chat with other traveling therapists, and help you navigate the complexities of running an online insurance-based practice. I'm so glad to have you with me on this journey. There are challenges at every turn when it comes to managing a private practice. With Alma, clinicians get the support they need to focus on what matters most, delivering great mental health care. When you become a member at Alma, you'll get credentialed with major insurance payers in less than 45 days and access to enhanced reimbursement rates. Plus, you can take advantage of HIPAA compliant EHR tools like intake forms, progress notes, and treatment planners. Visit helloalma.com slash Kim to learn more. That's hello, A-L-M-A dot com slash K-Y-M to get started. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Traveling Therapist Podcast. I'm really excited today. This is a special edition episode. The other day, I actually was at my wit's end with traveling and having celiac disease. I was bawling my eyes out. I took a video of it. I posted it on my Instagram and I was like, you guys have no idea how freaking hard it is to one, be a digital nomad and two, have celiac disease and be you know, trying to navigate this whole thing together. So I have two guests today, Aaron Davis and Christina. Christina, how do you say your last name? I always butcher Fabulous. it. Don't worry. It took me six years to learn how to pronounce. And they're both here with me. You guys were so sweet. As soon as I posted that, both of you reached out and they were like, I feel your pain because they both also have celiac disease. So we thought, why not have like a special edition traveling therapist episode to one, bring awareness to celiac disease. And two, if you've got it or other food allergies or any chronic illnesses and you're trying to travel and do the traveling therapist thing, we thought we'd have a discussion and and share it with you all to hopefully spread the message, give you hope, and also share our frustrations and how we navigate the whole thing. So welcome, you guys. I'd love if you do just a little quick intro about your celiac disease, how you got it, where it came, how you figured it out, and just sort of where you are with it right now. That'd be great. Christina, you're welcome to go first. Go ahead. Okay. I mean, hi, guys. My name is Christina Consalvalos, and I was formally diagnosed in 2012. And it changed getting a proper diagnosis changed my life truly because I had no idea how many issues gluten was causing me until I stopped. And man, it, it yeah, it truly has been been life changing to shift my diet in that way. And then I also so I'm a psychotherapist and I also run a gluten free travel lifestyle health conscious blog called Buen Camino. So that's me. <laughs> well, I'm Erin Davis and I'm an OCD specialist. I'm licensed in North Carolina and Virginia. My journey to getting diagnosed with celiac was quite a long one. And it first started probably in college for me, honestly. I noticed that if I'd eat a full bag of pretzels, like I didn't feel good. But then as life went on, seriously, I became, I was married. I was a wife. I was mom and got all these runaround things from doctors of like, oh, you're just tired from being a mom or, oh, it's just indigestion. And then I was just oh my gosh. breaking down to the point of like, I'm throwing up out of my sleep. Like I cannot yeah. eat anything. Like I am just so miserable. And I hit a point and it, it was rough y'all. Like my kids had to make cereal by themselves because I couldn't get out of bed. I was like, I can't live like this anymore. This is not indigestion. So, oh my gosh. Yes. It was at the peak of COVID, finally got diagnosed, and it made such a difference, not only in my life, but my family's life because they got me back, you know, and it was hard. Uh, 
So I really appreciate this time to chat, Kim, because so many people struggle or think like, I'll get through this, or if I just tough it out, it'll go away. And like, no, there's ways to feel better and a lot better. Yeah. And, you know, Erin, I'm really struck by you because you said 2020 was your diagnosis, you know, and yes. it's like probably since middle school, I've had celiac disease. I've always had gastrointestinal problems. I've always had like outbreaks of psoriasis and just, you know, going to dermatologists and just like giving me steroids and, you know, the diagnosis after diagnosis of, oh, anxious stomach, fast bowels, you know, just these crazy colonoscopies when I'm a kid, you know, it's like, why didn't anybody ever test me and to hear you say in 2020, even you were still totally undiagnosed. You yes. know, it just, it blows my freaking mind. It's so, it's really upsetting, you know, to think all three of us sitting here having to struggle for God knows how long with this stuff and nobody could even test for celiac, you know? Yeah. And clear tests to help point you in that direction. Yeah. It's I even had low B12 insane. and they didn't. It, exactly. <laughs> put that exactly. together. Like, gosh, no vitamin D, no vitamin B12. It's like your body's right. just not even allowing the nutrient. Exactly. Christina's doing this absorb like, motion, like, yeah, no it's like absorption happening. I mean, I remember I was like two, three years old, just vomiting all of the time. And the doctors were like, yes. I don't know. She just, it's, she's a kid. She has an upset stomach all of the time. This is normal. And uh, it never, I mean, I just lived with it, quote unquote. And it actually wasn't until I was really, I never, I was one of those lucky teens that didn't, you know, didn't have acne. And all of a sudden in college, I had cystic mm -hmm. acne. And that's yes. what actually, it was bizarre. And so I was going to the, the dermatologist. They kept putting me, it was like you, like steroidal cream and different wow. medications. Yet none of them were actually dealing with the root cause of the issue right? What was this dis-ease in my body, which was celiac disease. And right. finally, someone actually was a naturopath doctor who said, I have a feeling because of where the cystic acne was presenting. She's like, wow, this starts in your gut. Cause they say acne actually kind of starts in your gut. It's the skin. That's like the last place <laughs> to receive the toxins. Mm. To wow. To yeah, exactly. So as soon as I stopped the gluten, like within, I don't know, I would say like six to eight weeks, my skin was completely clear again, like completely clear wow. and the indigestion, right? Like going to sleep and like, am I going to mm -hmm. choke on my vomit? Like that was a right, real yeah. question I had to ask. And it seems like that was similar for you. And my mom eventually also was diagnosed because of, because of extreme indigestion. So oh, it's, gosh. I see my family members because it's hereditary and I'm seeing them my suffer sisters. Yes. Beer and like, I'm like, why choose to suffer? I don't know, but <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah. yeah. And I, it, people don't realize even after you get diagnosed, there's all this other stuff like the heartburn. I recently just got diagnosed with something called Barrett's esophagus because I've had hmm the heartburn so bad that now if I don't take like a meprazole, like a really strong meprazole every day, I'm going to get esophageal cancer because it's, it's burned my esophagus so much from the heartburn. I mean, I'm like popping Tums when I'm like 12, you know, it's like, why doesn't anybody think this is the problem? You know, it's just, it just, it blows my mind. Right. I think celiac so, is associated with 300 symptoms. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yes. We're it's, saying that. Yeah. It's easy to miss because whether it's headaches or the brain fog, the fatigue, joint pain, it can be easily mistaken and you go down the wrong path of treatment. And that, again, in my work with OCD, it's so important. I feel like my journey with celiac mm -hmm. translated to my OCD work because it's important to get the right diagnosis and the right treatment or else you don't get better. Exactly. Well, and how many, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. Go, I was going to say, go no, ahead, Christina. The majority of our serotonin is produced in our gut over 90%. Yes. So if we do not, so when I holistic psychotherapist that specializes in chronic illness, and I make it very clear that if we do not heal the gut, we are not healing the brain. And so often diagnoses and symptoms do seem to decrease, simmer down, sometimes completely heal. They don't meet criteria for the diagnosis anymore because you're feeling a lot different. So, I mean, I make it a requirement to see a root cause specialist at the same time as you see me, because 
Wow. I have had lots of clients find out they have celiac disease or some kind of chronic illness like Lyme disease, et cetera, et cetera, that requires them mm-hmm. to change their entire lives, especially their nutrition and their diet. So mm-hmm. important. Oh my gosh. And I don't know about you all, but you know, constantly, oh, I think you should go see a therapist, you know, because of the anxiety that, you know, if I get gluten, I mean, it is, I am so anxious. Like my heart speeds up. I'm just like, the anxiety is terrible. Um, and, you know, over, over my life, just, I'm so anxious. It's, pro- it's like probably cause I was getting contaminated with gluten and I couldn't even function, you know? Right. So, I mean, I really hope other therapists just listening to this, hear what we're saying, even with their own clients, if you're getting clients showing up with symptoms like this, like Christina said, go to a, a root cause naturopath or p- there's functional medicine doctors out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. Do this functional stuff. medicine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. That's oh, outside of our wheelhouse, right? That we cannot quite diagnose or treat. So to know like, okay, at least we're crossing that off the list. We know that that's not it or it is it. And now we can work alongside it is just so crucial. It's so important because I was told by a doctor that gluten in many cases of celiac disease or just gluten intolerance can cause brain inflammation when hence yes. why yes. I have so much anxiety if I get glutened, which happened recently. At least I think it happened like a day or two before you posted that video. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> it's just so real. Yeah. But the immense amount of anxiety is wow. And I used to have panic. I used to have panic disorder after going gluten free. I haven't had one panic attack since 2012. Awesome. Wow. Now, I believe that. For you Mm. ladies, did you experience form of grief in a way? Like once you learned about celiac, I did. Okay. Still every day, like Mm -hmm. before we hit record, I was telling Christina, I'm getting ready to go to Greece for like a culinary tour. You know, I see things like that all the time, like cooking classes and this and that, that I I would love to just go do, but I can't, you know, it's, it's so much grief around. It's like, well, nope, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. Luckily my friend, Megan, is going to do this whole culinary tour gluten-free for me, which is just unbelievable to me. I'm so excited about it. How sweet. But there's so much grief around. I can't participate in this. I can't go to that restaurant. I can't, you know, spaghetti was my favorite all-time food, like real spaghetti. You know, it's like, I can't even eat that. You know, you grieve bread, you know, mm-hmm. like all this stuff that you don't even think about, but there, the grief is real. I mean, gosh, I, I don't know about you, Christina, but yeah, for me, oh. Yeah. I mean, still, I mean, I'm a full-time digital nomad. So, you know, and I'm a foodie and I go places and I'm like, must be nice to, I'll ask people like, what does that taste like? Can you just describe it to me so I can get (laughs) an idea? And so like hold, you know, you know, witnessing that grief and being with that grief and Mm -hmm. celebrating the fact that I am not sick anymore. Like both of those things. And what's amazing, you know, when I was first diagnosed, there was very little options. Mm-hmm. And now like even McDonald's in Portugal has gluten-free buns. Oh so what? I know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Fries only three ingredients versus like, I forget how many in the US. So it's a bit mm. different. But anyway, like my point is that, you know, there are a lot of options and I still have grief. <laughs> And if you're guilty, go to, you know, I'll be at someone's house or in a situation where they're like, we made this this amazing thing. And you're just like, it almost feels like I'm being rude by like declining. And it's hard for people to grasp. I've never even heard of celiac disease. Like, what do you mean you can't eat? gluten are you sure is this just a diet thing no oh my gosh. I wish yeah <laughs> and it's like <laughs> yeah that declining food like so many people try to be so accommodating you know like friends and family and, and but like yeah but did you use the same spoon or the same knife did you put that bread in the same toaster yes. like peanut butter nobody gets y'all it, like, peanut butter oh my god just nobody gotta label it cross-contamination yeah <laughs> oh my god well yeah, yeah there's I mean, a ton of guys I I feel like there is a ton of social anxiety that comes up when, like you're saying, Christine, when you're at a function or a party or even ordering food, like I hate that part of being out at a restaurant and be like, okay, is this cooked separately? Like (laughs) no croutons, you know? Yes. Yep. I think the last time I met with Christina, we did another episode kind of around the same topic. And I was telling her, I've actually written an entire book. I haven't published it yet, but an entire book around PTSD, like having a PTSD diagnosis when you have something like celiac disease, because it's like, like the other day when I posted that thing, I talked to the waitress, I say all these things, I ask all the questions. She's like, I got you, girl. 
outcomes two plates. One's got croutons on the salad and then the other one has a piece of bread just sitting on the edge of the plate. It's like Mm -mm. the PTSD. And then she's like, well, do you want me to go make you something else? I'm like, fuck no, I don't want you. Yeah. I I can't even trust to eat here. The anxiety is going all through me. I'm like, I'm going to get sick. You just promised me that it was fine. And now it's not, it's literally like PTSD for me now, you know, just, just the like, the anxiety around, are they telling the truth? Do they care enough to even be careful? What's going on back in that kitchen? The hypervigilance is so real for me with like oh, going yeah. out to eat. And I mean, it's crazy. Like I'm sure I meet the criteria for PTSD around this stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm glad you put yeah. some language around that. And I'll buy your book because I feel <laughs> okay. it. And one of my colleagues, I think she was newly diagnosed right around the same time I was. And we went to like a work birthday party lunch thing. She, y'all, she ordered pizza, normal pizza. And she's like, I'm just going to eat the cheese off the top. And I'm like, honey, you you can't do that. Oh my God. And I'm like, I feel like I'm watching you drown and I'm not throwing you a life raft. Like Mm -hmm. you can't do that. And she was like, yeah, she brushed it off for a little bit until, you know, she got sick. And she's like, you're right. I can't do that again. It is like you try to, know about you guys, but it's like, maybe I could just, maybe I could eat the lettuce where the crouton wasn't, you know, it'd be, but then you learn over time, like, it's just not going to work because you're just going to get sick, you know? Yeah. And I read some places like, like getting cross contaminated. It takes almost about six months for your body to fully get it out of your what? system. But then I also read that, that mm. the majority of us who eat out are constantly being cross-contaminated anyway. So the whole thing with the salad, right? They bring it out with the, well, we'll make you a new one. I saw a hack on Instagram where you put pepper on it or something visible so that if they just take the, I was like, okay, I'm going to (laughs) start pursuing that because I'm pretty sure they'll Mm -hmm. just take it. They'll just take it off. I mean, I went and got a burger yesterday and I was like, just, making sure this is gluten-free. I always ask, right? Yeah. And he looked at it and he's like, actually, I don't think so. And I'm like, thank you, sir. And he's like, can't you just take it off? I can't just take it off. Touched everything else. I feel so anxious hearing you say that. Yes. Yeah. The other day I went to, yes, that's such a great, I saw that too, Christine. I think it was salad dressing. They put on top of it, like over top to take it back and just to make sure that they got a whole new salad. Just the other day, I went to the sushi place. It had like on the Find Me Gluten Free app, it had like like a million good ratings. And they come over and they tell me all the sushi I can have. And all of it has that crab in it, the K-R-A-B. And I'm like, this is, crab is not, the K-R-A-B crab is not gluten-free. They're like, yes, it is. And I'm like, no, it's not. And they brought the package. And I'm like, it says wheat right here. And this restaurant was like, we had no idea. Oh and I'm like, gosh. you guys have been serving this to people for how long? I mean, the reviews went back years, probably, you know, it just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting worked up talking about it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought up the uh, Find Me Gluten-Free app because that's been mm. super nice to have in finding restaurants. And I love when people leave reviews and they tell me exactly what they ordered. So then I'm like, okay, I I know that that's too. safe. And then I can also see if they are symptomatic or asymptomatic. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It just helps me feel better when I know that they're, cause I'm super sensitive. I don't know about y'all, but like, yeah, for just real. the tiniest little bit of cross contamination. I'm sick. Yeah. It's like yeah. Russian roulette for me because like my symptoms differ every single time. Like I'll get a huge migraine. My stomach will feel like someone's stabbing it. And it's like, what are we going to suffer from this time? It's really, it's not consistent. And it's just, yeah, there's, there's PT, there's a lot of PTSD that happens through this and often I try to find places with kitchens so that I can just buy my own food but guess what there's yes. also the the risk and stress of like what was cooked on this pan what's that crumb this fork I'm pretty exactly. sure has crumbs in this drawer you know it's all of these things so often I'm like washing everything before I'm using it right absolutely Managing a private practice can be challenging. There are obstacles at every turn, from navigating the credentialing process, to managing finances, to finding new clients. That's where Alma can help. Alma is on a mission to simplify access to mental health care by focusing first and foremost on supporting clinicians. How? 
For starters, Alma makes it easy and financially rewarding to accept insurance and get credentialed within 45 days and access enhanced reimbursement rates with major payers. Alma handles all the paperwork from eligibility checks to claim submissions, and they guarantee payment within two weeks of each appointment. Members also get access to HIPAA compliant EHR tools like intake forms, progress notes, and treatment planners, plus administrative support. So you can spend less time on paperwork and more time delivering great mental health care. Visit helloalma.com slash Kim to learn more. That's helloalma.com slash KYM to get started. Yeah, I mean, we travel now with, luckily we have the we have the cars with us in the United States, but I've got pots and pans, plastic cutlery, paper plates, you know, that I eat everything off of in, in these kitchens that we live in, you know, because at least we can clean them up, but there's always, you know, there's gluten on mm-hmm. um, the handle of the microwave, the handle of the refrigerator, you know, you know, you're touching gluten in these Airbnbs that we're living in. And Christina, I think you live in like a community housing sometimes, right? Like where there's like lots of just other random nomads kind of living that don't know anything about it. At least my boyfriend is like, tries to be careful, you know, if he has gluten. It's a community kitchen sometimes. And so like, I yeah. have these like bags with me that are amazing. I don't know if you guys get them. You can get them oh, on yes. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. So that way I can use like the community toaster and oven and feel way safer doing that. So that's kind of like my, my way of going about it. But there's still going to be some level of risk at all times. I'm willing to take it because I'm not going to just like sit at home and just dream of traveling and doing this. Like I you kind of have to decide the risk versus benefit. Like what is there the risk of me getting glutened once in a blue moon? Okay. It sucks. And I'm willing right. to take it at this point. I, you know, I carry charcoal with me all of the time. That's my number yeah. one hack. If I even really sense, because even I'm charcoal. to like oil, activated charcoal, I'm sensitive to just oils. Okay. So like, if I feel mm-hmm. any kind of stomach upset, I will take six right there and then, and I will tell six. you, it's I need to do that all the time. Oh, I'll like one or two. Yeah. You could buy them in the Etsy or whatever, you know, just like jars of activated charcoal. I've only take like one or two, but I'm hearing you say six. I'm all over that now. <laughs> I, I six because I'm like, if just in case there's any risk that I was cross contaminated, I want it to bind because what act so what, for those who don't know, active charcoal is a binder. So it's going to bind to whatever you ate or drink any kind of toxins and it's going to take it down. So so that you can properly detox it if you get what I'm saying. So you want that out of your system immediately. I mean, people use it as like a hangover hack and for so many other things, but I specifically have it for, for my stomach issues for for when these things happen and my mom takes way more risks than I do when it comes to food and she has it in her purse all the time and it's life-changing so yeah yeah I've got some product called gluten That's gluten go I don't know if you guys oh I I, I I've got a big called gluten go I got off of Amazon too that seems to help a lot too when I take it but the activated charcoal for for sure is an excellent one yeah. Nice. Yeah. Are you hearing some new new that. things, Erin? I bet you've got some hacks yeah. too. <laughs> well, I was thinking maybe we should talk about our hacks, but this is leading right into it. So yeah. yeah. I also use this app called the GF Scanner. Do you all use that? Yes. yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. So it's really neat because you can scan barcodes and it will give you a green, yellow, or red on mm-hmm. the possibility of gluten being in the product. And I mean, if it's yellow, I basically don't play around. I'm like, nope, not taking a chance. Because it's like could contain. It's like one of those like manufactured in the same facility as yes. the yeast, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Then the other hack or a piece of information that I thought was very interesting is how gluten shows up in so many products, even cosmetics. So people have to be careful of their makeup, their face wash, their shampoo, all the things. So, and I love sun bum. I don't know about y'all, but yeah. I love sun bum sunscreen. Oh, I don't, I, does that have gluten in it? I don't no, know. It's gluten free. Oh, oh, gluten free. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say it had gluten. Oh my God. Don't tell me that. <laughs> no, no. Those are just some of the products I use. And yeah, the GF scanner, I think it's been super helpful and just 
quickly checking, you know, in the grocery store and not having to do a whole deep dive. Okay. Good to know. That's amazing. I didn't even know about that app. Yeah. I feel like just talking to you guys, it's like, we could have a whole podcast just on this topic forever. Cause there's so much I just want to say about this. Okay. So we got the gluten-free app. We've got the medications we take, we take, I take my pots and pans. Christina uses the toaster bag. Are there anything, how's it for you, Erin? Like, cause you mm-hmm. live in a house with a family, right? Yes. Do you have special protocols just with your family, like in the kitchen? How do you guys manage that? Because I guess yes. the kids maybe aren't gluten-free. I don't know. Maybe they are. We mm-hmm. are considering oh, it, but right now they're not. And so what we have done is I have my own air fryer and I've got a label on there, gluten-free only. So I make yes. all the gluten-free food in there. And so it's never mm-hmm. cross-contaminated. And then the oven is where I can fix their regular chicken nuggets or whatever. But yeah, it's hard on the significant others too, you know, and like my husband, he pretty much eats gluten-free now, unless we're out at a restaurant, you know, then he'll get Mm -hmm. whatever he wants. But yeah, so it's an adjustment for everybody. Oh, it 100% is. I just think my, my ex fiance, he, we just, I was, when when we got together, I said, this is a 100% gluten-free home. I, I don't do not want to risk cross-contamination wow. in the house. And he was like all on board, which I appreciated the support. And then he always had stomach issues. And guess who found out? He was celiac. Oh, Are right you serious? End of relationship, 100%. Because he, and they came, oh, it almost, his stomach issues almost became more pronounced because he was only eating gluten-free with me. So it was when he yes. ate away from me, which wasn't so often that he would have mm-hmm. something it was like you know so that we were talking before we got on about how many people probably don't even realize they have a gluten intolerance or celiac mm-hmm. disease and listening to this definitely worth ruling out at the very because yes. it it can shift your life for the better and it's not the end of the world there are so many beautiful substitutes now and nothing nothing better than feeling good in your body I don't know how you ladies feel about that, but I can. You're so right. And and hearing you say that, I'm I'm like jealous because I continue to remain sick all the time, you know, despite Mm. being careful. And it's just the last two months has been nonstop sick. You know, it's just been terrible. It makes you, it makes me question like the traveling thing or even ever leaving the house really, because it's just so miserable. And then the other day, I mean, this is just, you know, side note, I, went to the store, I bought some chips and some dip, like Taco Bell bean dip, right? I read the label and it says the only allergen is like dairy on it. I'm like, okay. And then I I eat like half the jar. And then I'm like, I'm totally going to vomit. And I go throw up and then I go look at the label and it's got barley down in the last ingredient. It says barley. And I'm like, are you fucking gluten? That's it didn't even say wheat on the allergens. And I read like probably the first like 15 ingredients, but I didn't get the barley. It's not, but um, yeah, it should be under, it should be under gluten rather than wheat because it's not wheat technically. So, exactly. I mean, yeah. I was at a retreat yes. and they served a soup and I asked, you know, and I didn't mm-hmm. think I didn't ask for anything. I just said for sure. No gluten. They're like, it's vegetable soup. No gluten. I'm eating it okay. halfway through. I'm like, it It felt like someone was just doing this to my intestines. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God, there's absolutely no gluten. They're like, yeah, for sure, for sure. And then they told me what it was. Anyway, they told me the box it was from, but they didn't have it anymore. So I went to the store uh, of the place. I'm in, you know, I'm in Portugal and mm-hmm. I go to the place and I'm like, out of curiosity, what does it have? Stock. What does stock have? <laughs> Oftentimes, gluten. And I was uh. able to you know, we get gaslit sometimes too. Like that's part of this. <gasps> yes. Oh, that gives me chills. Yes. So like, true. Like, like I know better than you. There is no gluten in this. Or like people think it's in our, like our symptoms are in our head and yeah, so many, they're in our gut. I'm pretty sure they're in our gut. And, and that alarm is going off saying you were yeah. not so, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You're so right. Cause then you start to question yourself. At least I do. I'm like, am I crazy? You know, am I like, so like psychosomatic yes. with this stuff? It's causing me to have symptoms. You am know, I like, being like, too much? Exactly. Oh my God. I just got goosebumps when you said that. Yeah. That I yeah. feel that like deeply unbelievable. Mm. Yeah. But I feel like, Chris- I feel like emotional right now. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Christina, like saying, 
you know, you could get glutened every once in a while while you're traveling. And that happens even for me. Like I was telling Kim before we got on that mm-hmm. I don't travel very much because I'm scared and mm-hmm. I love traveling. And so yes. you guys are giving me some hope. And cause like the other day I went to a coffee shop and I know what's in the, you know, the coffee syrups, Tarani, like I've emailed them before mm-hmm. and I've gotten their ingredient yes. list. So I know what is safe, but I think I got cross contaminated, you know? Oh and my gosh. So I got sick. And even though I don't go anywhere, I rarely eat out just getting a coffee and I got sick. So oh, it can happen so anywhere. Upsetting. Really happen anywhere. And, mm. you know, now with that said, there's like a, I forget which, what well, there's like cruise lines that are now offering gluten free. Oh, yeah. Prices. Oh my gosh. I, that's Amazing. what I have done. Yeah. Okay. I have mm. gone on Carnival and I will say I have done really well with Carnival yes. cruises and the gluten-free. See, that's nice. great. And then there's like a resort in Costa Rica. I cannot recall the name at the top of my head. That's like 100% gluten-free. Oh my gosh. What? Now. So like okay. those- <laughs> I feel a like retreat coming on. <laughs> I mean, maybe i uh, know <laughs> there was a gluten-free free cruise once upon a time i don't know wow. what cruise line it was but i think the other thing to be clear here too just so the listeners know like you can get glutened or your celiac can get activated whether it's wheat barley or rye yeah yes yeah yeah exactly hops and beer you know anything yes. like hoppy and I also that. heard that we could have similar reactions to corn. I don't know if you guys yes. are sensitive to corn, but somehow or another, our body can misinterpret. I, it. I had my, my medicine doctor at one point told me to, I should not eat any grains whatsoever because it's all basically cross-contaminated the way that it's like grown in the fields. I know, I know Italy and Europe has got a different standard for that stuff, but anywhere in the United States, he was like, you should not eat corn. You should not eat you know, obviously gluten or any of those grains, rice, any of that. He told me not to eat any grains whatsoever, ever. If I wanted to be totally healthy, of course I don't do that. I've heard that, that would suck. And and also like oatmeal, even if it's gluten free, affects yes. you know affects my stomach. But the yes. what's very close protein to gluten is actually dairy. So yes. that's why so many folks who are you know gluten intolerance or celiac also can't do dairy. And actually the esophageal issues are almost always dairy related next to the gluten. So I don't know. Mm, It probably is. My last test, like I was totally flared on the lactose. He's like, you cannot have any dairy unless you take a lactate before you eat like cheese or something like that. And he told me Cabot cheese out of Vermont is like, has no lactate in it. Just FYI. Mm. So I've been trying to eat that more. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think I, too, um, once is the protein oh that's really similar. So rather mm. than the lab, so I don't, maybe worth just, just testing out to see how you feel. Cause it may not be the yeah. gluten. Yeah. Cause I had a friend who's has celiac and is so sensitive and she was being extremely diligent and then found out it was almonds. It was oh almond my God. too. So oh. now that she stopped almonds, her inflammation mm. is down, but she was, she was also, I mean, she got to that point. I mean, and for those listening, it can really get you to this point because it's, mm-hmm. it's harsh. It's harsh. Yeah. Sorry. What were you saying? I was, I was just uh, thinking how people don't really understand how awful it is when you get glutened. Like, it's not like it's out of system in 24 hours. It's not like a 24 hour stomach bug. I mean, like, I really feel like this wave of fatigue and pain mm-hmm. and ickiness for at least two weeks. As- oh yeah. Inflammation, joint pain. I think Christina shared last time she gets that, the bloated belly, right, Christina? I look like I'm literally pregnant. Like mm-hmm. yeah, I'm mistakenly, been mistakenly pregnant. I mean, people have mistakenly thought I was pregnant after consuming gluten. That's how bad. Yeah. I've never had that one, but I've seen people with it. Like they're fine. And then an hour later, their stomach is just way out. Like they're eight months pregnant. Like that is just unbelievable. Yeah. Gosh, you guys, it's been so great talking to you. About this. I I just, I'm listening, just understand one that you might have people in your life that are going through this to just kind of understand like the psychological issues that come with it, like the pain behind it. And then, you know, just having you ladies to talk to about it just feels really good to just have other people that understand Same. what I'm going through. 
you know? Oh, yeah. And I just want to say like, there's such a love language. If you know anyone who has like a sensitivity to an ingredient, if there's such a love language mm-hmm. in being curious and asking questions and offering offering options and, you know, asking what feels okay and what feels safe for them, because you can hear us, there's this guilt and this shame when we go to, you know, a gathering or we go to a restaurant and just simply asking, are we being too much? Are we being, is is this so inconvenient for the person? Are they having to go out of the way for us? Like, we don't, we don't want this, but also we don't want to be sick for two weeks, like, like Mm -hmm, Aaron just mentioned. So we appreciate those in our lives who, you know, are trying to make it the world just a bit safer for us and more comfortable. Really appreciate it. Totally. I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. Any final thoughts, Erin? Well, if someone is interested in trying to get a diagnosis, you know, talk to your doctor, talk to your family to see if there's been any family history of GI issues, but really once even though the condition is hard, it feels so much better once you have a clear path for treatment, because then you know that you're going to feel better. And at least in my experience, once I was gluten-free, at least for six months, definitely by the one year mark, I felt like a completely different person. I felt like I got me back and my kids got their mom back. My husband got his wife back. And like, amazing. yeah, it was so special that I could be awake and alert and happy and not in pain. So it's really life-changing once you find the right treatment and you know what's going on. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Thank you ladies for just meeting with me today. I really appreciate it and, and spreading the the word. And Christina's got an excellent blog. Can you spell it, Christina? Because I, I we'll put the link, yeah. but we spell it out. It's it's a weird one. So it's Buen, B-U-E-N, Camino, but it's with a Q instead of a C. So Q-A-M-I-N-O. And that's simply because the C was already taken. <laughs> but I also just piggyback off Erin and say, like I said, it nothing tastes better than feeling good in your body. Like my panic, my panic attacks stopped. My skin cleared up. My brain fog went away. I mean, I don't know how I was operating in such extreme brain fog for all of those years prior to diagnoses like I yeah. felt like a different person and I was like yes. I, I became more of me just like just I think like both of you. so so there is yeah. there really is something on the other side of the rainbow here like a lot of a lot of you found and I was so gonna say one sure. last thing one last yeah. thing traveling that's really exciting when we are using the app and I'm in like all these foreign countries and it takes to get this like places that you would probably never find usually. And I get there and the owner has their own story about how they were diagnosed or their yes. family member was diagnosed. I found a 100%. There's a gluten-free market on the oh. island of Manila. And the owner, her son, she had celiac disease all over her. Her son was wow. diagnosed, nearly died from it. And she wanted to give me a hug. She wanted a picture with me. Like there is such beautiful oh. relations and community to be made within the sphere. So there is a lot of joy within the disease. <laughs> I just want to share that as well. Yeah. As a oh, I love note. that. Yeah. Well, if you go to Lipson uh, in, in Portugal, there's a, a totally gluten-free tapas restaurant there that I went to and I literally ordered all the tapas in this Ooh, restaurant. Yeah. My mom was with me. We just ate everything they had in the restaurant. It was so good. But what anyway. was it called? Do you remember? I'll have, I'll have to find it. I'll send it to you. I can't I'll remember the name it. of it, but I was like, I am literally in heaven. I never want to leave. <laughs> it was so good. Yes. I love that. I love that. Oh, ladies, anyway, thank you so much. Oh, I could talk to thank you forever. You. I've got a 12 o'clock. That's yeah. why I got to go. But uh, just okay. thank you so much. And uh, yeah, reach out anytime. And you guys, if anybody listening to this, if this helps one get diagnosed or even stop eating gluten, if you're feeling sick, I, like we've done our job today. So I really appreciate yeah. you guys coming and sharing your stories. Yeah. Thank you, you Kim. Both. Thanks, everybody. Thank nice both. to meet you, Christina. Yes, likewise, Aaron. We'll be in. We'll be in uh, hugs yes. to you. Okay. Yep. You guys too. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Traveling Therapist podcast. For show notes, links, and downloads, head over to thetravelingtherapist.com, where you'll be able to learn more about my journey, the courses I've created for you, and other exciting resources to make your dreams become a reality. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share with your traveling therapist friends, subscribe to the podcast, and if you love this episode, please leave a review.